My name is Roy Olson. I'm your missionary from the wonderful country of Romania, the easternmost nation on the continent of Europe. Our northern neighbor is Ukraine, and beyond that is the Vladimir Putin territory, Russia. And um, my name is Roy, did I say that? And uh, I'm your friend. I'd like to speak to you today, please, for a few minutes on the subject of vision. When I talk about vision, I think of some uh, men of uh, biblical history, for instance, like Noah. Noah knew why he was on earth. He had a job, he had a task, he had an assignment, and he had a focus. Build that ark. And indeed, he spent a major portion of his lifetime building that ark. I'm sure it involved designing and getting materials together and so on. But his focus was build that ark. Of course, after him comes Moses. Moses knew from a child or from a young man what he was to do. He knew he was to be a deliverer of his people, Israel from the hand of Pharaoh and bring them into the promised land. Even though he went through some difficult times, some detours in the road, nevertheless, he accomplished his purpose and he brought them out. From the hand of uh, Pharaoh into the wilderness to the border of the promised land. After him, we remember Joseph. Joseph, as a boy, God gave him dreams. Through these dreams, he understood what was to happen in his life. And he also went through some very difficult times, detours, but ultimately the vision, the dream came to pass. Then we go into the New Testament, and we think of the Apostle Paul. His natural desire was to go to his own people, the Jews, with the message of Jesus Christ and the faith in him accrues to us eternal life. But God told him, no, your focus, your vision, your assignment is to go to the Gentiles or to the non-Jews. And he did so. And as these men had a vision, I suggest to you today, my friend, that uh, you are here on earth for a purpose. You have an assignment. You're not just here to live an ordinary humdrum life, but rather your life has a purpose. And uh, you remember Habakkuk in the book of Habakkuk, or Habakkuk, as some people would say that he was instructed in the second chapter, make the vision so clear and so simple that you can write it down that even someone uh, running and seeing the tablet could understand what it is. You have such an assignment. In fact, having a focus, a dream, a vision is an indication of being filled with the Holy Spirit, is it not? You remember on the day of Pentecost, the Apostle Peter, speaking to the assembled crowd there, said that, uh, quoting from Joel of the Old Testament, that in the last days shall come to pass that the Spirit of God would be poured out upon all people, men and women alike, Jew and Gentile alike, and that young men should see visions and old men should dream dreams. And uh, having a vision or a dream is an indication of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, I would just suggest that, you know, if you don't have a dream or a vision, you get one. Now, uh, a vision is to to see, see something or gaze upon something. It's like an inspired uh, appearance 
maybe not with your natural eyes, but certainly with clarity of understanding. And it reads generally something that would be at uh, a time when you're in sleep, or in, sometimes we call it the soft and fluffy zone. It becomes so clear, you just get the key to the situation. But uh, yes, and uh, as we said, if we don't have one, the uh, biblical key to getting one is, number one, ask. Number two, seek. Number three, knock. Don't just hope it'll happen. Go after it. It's yours. It's your portion. And it will give direction to your life. So just ask God about it. When you have a vision, it gives focus to your life. It gives direction. To the person without a vision, any direction is okay. Because they have no focus. When you have vision, you go back to remember something and uh, focus your life. And it also tells you what not to do. There are a thousand voices calling you in every direction. You can't do everything. But you can do that one thing and do it with excellence, with effectiveness. When you don't have a vision, you have a kind of mediocre, ordinary life. You know, keep the people happy, pay the bills, uh, go to the job, pay the salaries, day in, day out. We kind of call it the, the rat race. And then you retire. And what do you do when you retire? You self-indulge until you can't indulge anymore, then you just wait to die? No. Your life is more than that. Your life is a, a need to be met, a, a mission to accomplish, a task to be done, a job to be filled, a need to be met. And God so designed you with the ability, the talent, the intelligence, and depending on Him and the Holy Spirit to give you success in that for which He is calling. Sometimes I ask myself, do I have a vision for where I am in life, for the church I attend, for where I live, for my ministry, whatever I'm called to do, do I have vision? Do I have a vision for my, my people, my wife, my children, my grandchildren? There are over 7 billion people walking on planet Earth, I understand. And of those 7 billion, I wonder, how many know me, Roy, or you? Well, I think maybe, maybe a thousand, maybe a thousand people know me. Well, of those thousand people that know me, how many of those would pray once a year for me? or once a month, or once a week, or once a day. And the probability is that it reduces significantly to a handful. Maybe. But surely there is one. There is always one. Because you are the one who prays for your ministry, your direction, your focus. There will always be one because that's your responsibility, your primary responsibility. It's not a matter of pride. It's a matter of obedience to be able to do the will of God. The world is filled with needs, teenagers, orphans, and the list goes on. People are dying of starvation. People are dying of loneliness. And we all have a part to play, and you do. One encounter with God, one uh, just glimpse, will begin a, a, a ministry, a business, an orphanage, a book, a family, a song, a future, a focus. And when there is no vision, the Bible says the people perish. They go helter skelter in any direction because they lack focus. Vision will give you focus. 
And if you don't have a vision for your life, who does? If you don't pray for your ministry, who should? And why would they? Praise for your village. Who has a vision for that? Yes, I have a responsibility for where I am, my relationships, my family, my job, my church, my pastor, my leaders, and yes, my ministry. You remember the Revelation talks about people who say they're rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and the Lord says they're, amongst other things, a blind. Well, would you not agree with me that somebody without a vision is in some sense blind? They don't know where they're going. They don't have direction. They don't have focus. They don't have purpose. King Uzziah in Isaiah sixth chapter saw the Lord. So the Lord high and lifted up with his train filling the temple. You may know the story. And after he saw the Lord, he saw himself. But after a divine encounter with the Lord, after seeing the Lord seeing himself and having that encounter, he got focus for his life. He knew what he was supposed to do and where he was supposed to do it. And likewise, you and I have a, a life of significance. Three questions only human beings ask. Number one, where do I come from? Origins. Question number two, where am I going? Destiny. Question number three, why am I here? Significance. Only human beings ask, not a whale, not a cow, not a chimpanzee. Only human beings ask that. Because God has put a sense, a desire, or a significance in every person's life. Dear friend, you are significant. Because in doing the will of God and following, your assignment on earth, your significance will last for this life and for eternity. Thanks for listening. My name is Roy, and I'm your friend. See you next time. Goodbye.